Hello, I'm Karen Vandersand at Mercy Cedar Rapids. Today we're talking about prostate cancer. It's the second most common cancer among men in the United States, and sadly, it's one of the most common forms of cancer deaths in the country. Unfortunately, cases of prostate cancer are on the rise and have been for several years now. We're checking in today with Dr. Matthew Ferroni. He's a urologist from the Mercy Urology Clinic. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Why are we seeing more cases of prostate cancer these days? Yeah, so there's a lot of different factors to that, Karen. And um, a lot of prostate cancer, when we think about statistics and we think about men affected by prostate cancer, it often takes five to 10 years to kind of see that survival data kind of um, flush out. Prostate cancer, even very aggressive forms of prostate cancer, um, tend to still be pretty slow growing. Um, one of the main factors um, is still kind of this hangover from change in guidelines from one of the largest entities that basically provides guidelines for practice for primary care uh, physicians and, and uh, providers on prostate cancer screening. Um, back in 2012, this entity actually came out with a statement um, against prostate cancer screening based on data that was available at the time, which unfortunately was not very good. The studies that were looked at were very contaminated studies, but the conclusions that were drawn were unfortunately that prostate cancer screening does not save lives. And what we know now is those studies were very, very poorly designed and poorly executed. Um, there has been a reversal of that five years later, that same entity, um, the United States Preventative Services Task Force, backed away from that statement, now actually allowing um, primary care providers to have conversations with patients on prostate cancer screening and setting um, age ranges where it would be appropriate. Um, there are other governing bodies of guidelines like the American Cancer Society and the um, NCCN, which is the National uh, Cancer um, uh, Network, um, that basically provide better, what we think are better strategies for prostate cancer screening um, starting earlier, which is kind of the key. Um, but we're still seeing the impact on changes in recommendations for screening now 10 years later. I think COVID had something to do with it as well. You know, there was a two-year period where a lot of men were staying away from hospitals and clinics, you know, rightfully so, with concerns for infections. But that left a lot of men with gaps in their screening that now are coming back into the fray and having um, PSA screens and finding that they're elevated. Um, and, and I think another big factor, which we often ignore, is just environmental exposures. You know, we're learning a lot now about sort of the standard American diet and how big of an impact that's having on more advanced prostate cancers, you know, processed meats, red meat in general, dairy products, things that now have been linked to higher incidences of prostate cancer and certainly more in the United States uh, than many other, you know, developed countries. We have dietitians meet with our prostate cancer patients about known foods and you know different diets that can help with prostate cancer outcomes and things like that. And then we work with the Thrive Program. We have genetics, just this whole kind of comprehensive, um, kind of like holistic approach to prostate cancer. So like we're really proud of that. Like I had a patient come for a second opinion prostate cancer, and he was so worried about like upsetting his urologist and I kind of said look this goes both ways I mean you know they see second opinions for patients we see and it, it's just a matter of who do you feel comfortable with and like yeah like you get as a patient to decide like who treats you and where you get your treatment and options are good like options for patients are good and it and it and that kind of competitive spirit I think is what drives us to do better and drives quality how do you screen for prostate yeah. cancer so it's kind of twofold one is a, a blood test called a PSA prostate specific antigen um, the other is a digital rectal exam feeling the prostate on examination feeling for any nodules or tumors PSA screening is kind of the more dominant in terms of having that blood test done, um, especially if patients are seeing their providers on a yearly basis and having other things checked like their cholesterol panels and um, for diabetics, their hemoglobin A1Cs. A lot of times PSA will just be added to that panel to be done, you know, before they would see a provider and then having the, the um, prostate exam at that time. So how does the PSA test work? Yeah, so it's a little bit complicated because 
the normal prostate makes PSA. So all men will have sort of a baseline number, PSA number. It's just that prostate cancer makes more of it. So there are elevations. It used to be um, 4.0 across the board for all men with sort of that uh, cut off for elevation or not. Younger men typically have lower baseline PSA levels because they have generally smaller prostates. As all men get older, their prostates will start to enlarge and that will make more PSA. So the number that we tolerate for a younger man for concern of prostate cancer with the PSA is much different than we would for a man in his 70s or 80s where we'd expect that number to be a little bit higher, maybe six or seven and still be quite normal. So a lot of it does have to do with interpretation of that value, not just a line in the sand cut off at four. There are other tests that are done in men now who do have an elevated PSA. In the past, you know, 10 years ago, um, even five years ago, men with an elevated PSA, the only option we had as urologists was to consider putting a man through a prostate biopsy to definitively diagnose prostate cancer, but we didn't know then and we know now is that we were putting many men through that procedure who didn't need it because lots of things can cause an elevated PSA that are not cancer. Things like inflammation, infection, just the sheer size of the prostate like we talked about before. So we now have a lot of other biomarker tests that we do in the urology clinic for men that are referred for elevated PSA to potentially save about 50% of them from unnecessary biopsies and really only focus on those guys that we're concerned about may have prostate cancer. Um, so those are becoming really standard of care now for most men. In a nutshell, what should men be watching for um, in terms of you know, signs or symptoms. Yeah. The whole point of a screening test, as, as many people know, is actually to find cancer, find problems before they become symptomatic. And prostate cancer is no different. Um, I often tell patients in my clinic to think about the prostate kind of like a donut. Um, the urethra runs right through the prostate. And as men get older and their prostates get larger, not from cancer, just from benign prostatic growth, oftentimes the middle of that donut will start to close up and men will start having a lot of urinary symptoms, weak flow of their stream, um, bladder issues like urgency, frequency, up a lot at nighttime. That does not mean prostate cancer. And um, even furthermore, men with prostate cancer often won't have those symptoms because if we, we again think about that donut the traditional place prostate cancer forms is on the outside of that donut not on the inside so men can have urinary symptoms and not have prostate cancer and many many men will have prostate cancer without urinary symptoms and it's important distinction because often i'll have men come in who had an elevated PSA blood test, and they'll say, well, I'm not worried, I, I don't have any symptoms, I'm not even sure why I'm here. And we often say, well, again, there's two different things going on here, both related to the prostate, but just not having symptoms does not mean men are in the clear when it comes to prostate cancer. A majority of men diagnosed with prostate cancer are not having any symptoms at all. I think there are many men, and you can correct me if I'm, if, if, if I'm assuming wrong here, but they're afraid of the topic, they're afraid to talk about it or see anyone for it because there's side effects that come with prostate cancer. Can you talk about that? 100%. And not even the men themselves, but even you know, providers, primary care providers know that in the past we have over diagnosed men. Uh, we've put them through procedures like prostate biopsies or even surgeries, radiation treatments for prostate cancer that left men with a lot of side effects, urinary side effects, even sexual side effects. Um, now we do things a lot smarter. So um, we have conversations with patients about the risks of things that we're doing, um, the tests that we're running. And like I said, back to the biomarker test, there are checkpoints all along the way now to make sure that we're not putting men through unnecessary procedures that can have impacts. And even for those men who unfortunately are diagnosed with prostate cancer, which the statistics now show about one in eight men in their lifetime will be diagnosed with prostate cancer, the treatments like surgery to remove the prostate or radiation treatments have gotten vastly better in terms of targeting just the prostate. Um, we do most of our surgeries now robotically, um, so small incisions, much better magnification, 
better preservation of urinary control and continence, better sexual uh, function preservation um, than ever was the case before. So sure, for many men, they may need treatments, um, but the impact of those treatments on quality of life is so much uh, less than it used to be with big open operations. Can you talk about, um, there's something relatively new that we offer here at Mercy called Eurolift, and, yeah. and we're seeing that a lot, I think, on TV and hearing little things about that. Yeah. Can you explain more about yeah. that? Yeah, so Eurolift is actually a procedure for men with benign enlarged prostate, so not prostate cancer, that again opens up the inside of that prostate to help improve urinary symptoms better flow of stream, um, better bladder symptoms like that frequency, that urgency and waking up at nighttime. Um, back to your question earlier about sort of men being afraid to talk to urologists, one of the really great things about a Urolift is before, men only really had medications like Flomax that many, many men are on for their symptoms or surgery, kind of more standard traditional surgeries that kind of get dubbed sort of the rotor rooter type procedures um, that we still do a lot of, but that can carry a lot of risks and a lot of side effects. Um, a Urolift is a procedure that oftentimes will get a man in the door to talk to me about less invasive options um, that may be on medications and not very happy with their symptoms. Um, the nice part there, although it's still the prostate, not necessarily prostate cancer, many of these men will have to make sure that they have been up to date with their prostate cancer screening. So if a man has not had a prostate exam or a PSA within the last few years, we always do that. And there's a lot of men who we find prostate cancer in who only kind of came in the door to have that conversation because of their urinary symptoms and their interest in, in a Euro lift. So it can be kind of an extra benefit, kind of a win-win for patients. Mm -hmm. Any final thoughts before we close up? Yeah, I mean, I think that there's a lot of attention in the news these days about prostate cancer rates going up, advanced cancers going up, metastatic um, uh, rates of prostate cancer going up. It's a battle right now that we're not winning. I mean, most cancers across the board in the last 10 years have gone down in terms of their um, um, death rates, in, in terms of their incidence rates. Prostate cancer is really one of the few that's going up. And again, a lot of it has to do with these traditional patterns of screening, these fears about screening, about getting screened, about these unnecessary treatments and, and procedures. Um, but it's really important for men to know that the earlier we can find prostate cancer, the easier we can treat it with maybe one treatment instead of two or three that really minimize the side effects um, overall and, and sort of lifetime side effects. Great information. Thanks for joining us yeah, today. Thanks for Dr. having me. Dr. I had a lot of fun.